Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing the papers. So we're moving on now to the punch. SIM and NIN linkage. NCC rules out extension. Telcos bar 12 million lines. I take full responsibility. Nigeria will recover, says Tinubu. Subsidy removal of petrol import crashes by 990 million liters monthly. Gridlock looms as present visits Lagos. Oshoba envoy others comment punch at photo exhibition. Day suspends revenue collection on farm produce. And FG to crash drug prices gets a billion dollar from Afrexim Bank. Okay. Which story are we starting with? Yes, I could start um, <coughs> with um, um, a story about the Nigerian economy. So the Nigerian economy, according to the British Council Director in Abuja, David Roberts, uh, said that um, the Nigerian economy is not in a mess. And according to him, he said a country with a GDP growth of 3.46% cannot be in crisis, considering that Europe is at the edge of a recession as well. So he was saying that um, the president's um, administration and their policies, all they need to do is just to sustain the policies, which includes the removal of petrol subsidy, and that the future looked bright for the country. He said in a statement, and I'd like to quote, he said, I lived and worked in Nigeria for many years as a British diplomat, and one of the issues that most disturbed me was the sustenance of the fuel subsidy regime. Why would a country with severe infrastructural deficit invest more on wasteful expenditure, such as cheap petrol, instead of building schools, hospitals, dams, and a national railway system? It is evident that that had to go. So um, he said, we joined the World Bank International Monetary Fund in saying much to the Nigerian government, and finally it's, it's gone. And everything we said would happen after it goes, it's happening. Nigeria's GDP is growing at 3.46%, while Europe is on the edge of um, recession. And he also says the stock market just crossed 100,000 basis points, overtaking Argentina as the world's most profitable stock, uh, stock market, and capital importation is up by 66%. But that's not the best story. So he went ahead to say the cherry on the cake is that fuel importation into Nigeria is now down by 50%, and this means that Nigeria's much depleted federation account will rapidly resuscitate and more funds will now trickle into the federating states from the federal government if well utilized so he went ahead to advise that the only thing he sees now is that government <coughs> needs to find a way to block corruption which also so adds, that all of these policies yeah. will see them trickle which to, that adds to what the president was saying that yeah. after i've laid the foundation this one these are foundational things mm -hmm. after that with if they now restructure now it's not left for you and your region mm, to, to manage your resources. You this resources. is like correcting the yeah. previous errors. Okay, hey, <clears> let's <throat> go to the gridlock. So our president is in town. Gridlock is building up in major parts of Lagos as president visits the state today to commission the red line. We mentioned that yesterday. Uh, this, uh, so um, according to communities uh, who have avoided taking that third million bridge, remember everybody's now taking Ikorodu Road, right? Mm. right? has now compounded it because he's there around. So according to a statement by the Federal Controller of Works Lagos State, Ulukore Dev Kesha, on Monday, he says that um, they commended at noon on Wednesday, the last as the closure of the, of the bridge up until Thursday by noon, um, says the Federal Ministry of Works wishes to inform the motoring public that in continuation of the ongoing rehabilitation of the Third Milan Bridge, it will be closed in those times and that um, the Lagos is also waiting for the president's um, arrival. So we're just advising motorists to just either stay put where you are, you can move your meetings to Friday because the president is around. He's, he's the, the convoy is going to compound things with the closure of the Milan Bridge. So enough is a, be a word. No, for the why. Why. It's too bad for you because you have to go to the island. Uh, you'll be all right. One day you go, you get home. Shall one day? <laughs> <laughs> one day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> so okay. the major headline, the SIM and NIN linkage. Um, it's been, it's been a challenge for many Nigerians struggling to link their SIMs and those that are asking to be revalidated. But the NCC is saying that there will be no extensions. That telcos should bar the 12 million lines that have not been linked. So. The first part of it is if you haven't linked your line at all, your, your line will be bad as of today. It was already done yesterday. Then there's another batch of people. These are people that have linked their NIN but is seeking revalidation. Yeah. So those that are, did not, have not been revalidated have up until March 29 to be able to revalidate their line or they would also be bad. Even though there's a court order in the Federal High Court in Lagos, that has placed a restraining um, restraint on telco, telecom op op operation, operators to not bar the line. Somebody took it up, and the judge actually said that there should be um, stay. stay 
mm. barring the lines. The NTC said this is a matter of national security and everybody must link their lines. But I know from personal feedback and also the, the punch carried stories of how people are struggling to get their lines, um, their NIN revalidated. It's costing people money. Those that already have NIN numbers, it's costing them money. Um, to get it, to get their numbers revalid, NIN number revalidated, and then it's also costing money to have it linked, which you shouldn't have if you really want something to. It, it wasn't costing before, so apparently well, they say it's costing. So subscribers are saying that the poor M that well, I don't want to mention a brand, but they mentioned the brand that like two brands were taken to court that people have tried over and over again yeah. and punch verify that they were not connecting and they had poor network and it's not allowing them. It's right. a matter of national security. Also, we're trying to fight all these uh, kidnappers. kidnapping. So, mm -hmm. so are, these guys cannot be delaying a nation trying to also link mm. things so we can follow the money. So mm. everything is interrelated. So I can't say because I want to pay extra ten thousand naira. We now disrupt the whole nation, national movement. I beg. <laughs> Ellison, BVN NIN bank set to freeze accounts. Nine policemen killed trying to rescue kidnapped victims <laughs> in Delta. Tinubu to sign executive order against rising cost of drugs, and says minister. Divestment and NPCL wants investors against idols' assets quick money. Peter will be happy with approval of Onrosaye uh, report. Strike. No more late night meetings with the federal government, says NLC. Eight died, 10 injured in Lagos, Sibadon Expressway, Oshun crashes. Okay, which story? Yes, I have Labour Party presidential candidate Peter will be has um, openly declared his support for the implementation of the Orosai report. Um, he said this on his handle, that's X handle. And um, he also said that he got many messages from people. They wanted to know how he felt about the implementation of the report. And he said, actually, this would have, he said he is in support. He also added that its implementation was part of his campaign manifesto. And he said something which I think is important. Opposition does not warrant, warrant blind and thoughtless criticisms, noting that whenever the government makes the right decisions related or even better ideas on how to move the nation forward should be proposed. He also said that um, the president's directive for full implementation of this um, report um, is significant will result in, in, in you know, a significant restructuring, restructuring of government agencies. Um, and then he said that uh, the government, you know, in spite of doing what is right, also need to understand that there is sort of like a, a fallout that it may affect some people. You know, it, it, the implications of it could be downsizing on workers and those are the things that government needs to also be clear on. So in, in summary, he agrees with it and he says that I'm opposition does not mean I should just be opposed to it and just yeah. 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 my criticism. Or anything. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's good. Yeah, that's I, I, I want this, um, following up to the NIN story, there's a BVN side of the story, which is the major headline in the Lison. Um, and the BVN part of the story is saying that any account that does not have BVN or NIN linked to the account, they, those accounts will be, um, they'll put a post no debit so that means the account is invalid you cannot do any transfer from that account from the first of march which is tomorrow from the first of march so there are some i don't know how people open the account they open old accounts but i know in recent times you can't even open the account without That's having BVN. bvn or nia now there is either, um, either at least you have to put one in so the conversation now is everybody Get your gets a way to ensure that your BVN or NIN is linked to your accounts, especially for Nigerians in diaspora. And I know many of them watch the show, mm -hmm. so that they can do it. If not, they will be unable to make any transfer from, from their an, account. An account, any accounts and any wallets. You won't be able to transfer from that account. There'll yeah. be post no debit or credit on the account. When my family came from the US, that was all the stuff. <laughs> NIN, BVN, NIN. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> so, well, you had to now. You had to. So, <laughs> yeah, so, all right, go ahead. Yeah, headsman uh, shot nine suspected headsman shot nine policemen and injured many others in an ambush in Ugeli Delta State. They said about 10 others are still missing. So the policemen attached to the force intelligence response team, the IRT, were deployed into a forest to rescue four kidnapped victims when they were ambushed by killer headsmen who were in their large numbers. And according to a police source in Delta State Police Command, they said the deceased officers and several others were deployed into a forest at Betsinga Duplessis community in Ugeli. That happened on Monday. They said they ran into an ambush by headsmen. 
There were more than nine that went for that rescue operation, but only nine bodies have been recovered so far. And according to one of the officers who they said ran out with a bullet wound, he said the headsmen were so many and heavily armed, they shot and killed many of them, and they are praying for the safe return of others. Another senior police officer who spoke, you know, condition of anonymity, said that um, they are suspecting sabotage. He said that their men were tracked. They, the policemen, had tracked the kidnappers and they knew where they were because they were going to rescue the victims, only to run into an ambush. And it seemed like those people knew that they were coming and prepared for them. He said they recovered just nine bodies and other 10 people are missing. So um, they said they are planning a rescue mission, but they are going to be very careful because those uh, headsmen are heavily armed and there are a lot of them. Okay, so the Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Professor Muhammad Ali Pate, has said that the president will soon issue an executive order to curb escalating drug uh, prices. He explained that it will be a short-term measure, while um, the mid- to long-term goal would be to domest the domestication of imported drugs within the next three years. Uh, specifically, he said that the federal government has initiated construction um, of pharmaceutical-grade warehouses in 21 states in collaboration with the drug, uh, drug management agencies, DMAs, in a strategic move to fortify pharmaceutical inf infrastructure uh, across the, the nation. He also said that he wanted to debunk the media reports that Nigeria was facing a manpower shortage in the healthcare system, insisting that the country has enough manpower for its healthcare services, despite the growing number of doctors and other healthcare professionals who are leaving the country for a foreign practice. So that's an interesting angle. Okay, moving on now to Vanguard. You might not be able to discuss it, but let's Sanrasaye report FG Labour disagree on job losses. Tenable to Nigerians, I won't rush to restructure. Mambila, I have no regrets paying Akin, um, Agunoye's medical travel bills. Investors lose 1.5 trillion naira in stocks over new monetary policy. We called off strike over threats of intimidation, says Ajero. We gave family fixes dates for bearer rights. Uh, I was going to take us to the... One of the parts of the uh, president's visit to um, Governor Kerry Dolu, interestingly, when he was visiting him, he did something quite symbolic. He took his uh, certificate of return to Pa Fashion Royalty. I thought that was interesting. He showed the Afenifere leader his certificate of return given to him by INEC after he won the February 25th, last 2023 elections. Pa Fashion Royalty's address read by Oba Olufalai um, said that. Um, he hailed President Inubu's courage and sagacity, which made him implement the Onrasai report as the basis for reforming this public school. So I was like, okay, I have come. Here is my certificate. We've not seen it since. We've not seen it since that yes. time. Interesting. Okay, yeah, let's go. Crazy. I think that's all we can take from um, the story. Uh, okay. Yes, um, um, the CBN governor, Yemikado, so had given us a, given a new policy. The NPR rate had increased to 27%. I mean, yeah. And that has impacted 22.75% from 18%. And that made the inv investors in Nigeria stock has to lose 1.5 trillion naira in stock, just over that policy effect. I know they have their reasons, but I'm sure stock would have, um, stock, the stock market people are not happy about it because it doesn't look good for them. All right, so that's all we can take on Front Page Review. When we come back, we move on to our next sponsored segment. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> 